In this video, we will build our first deep learning model in Python using the MNIST dataset. The MNIST database contains grayscale images of handwriting digits and their correct labels from 0 to 9. In our example, we will use the Keras library, which is the most used deep learning framework. Keras is an open source API built on top of TensorFlow. It minimizes the number of actions required, it provides clear error messages, and it also has extensive documentation. So let's import the MNIST from keras.dataset. Then from the MNIST, we can load the train images, train labels, test images, and the test labels. During this exercise, our model will learn from the training data, which contains train images and train labels. And we will check if our model performs also well on the test images. The test data is used to see how well the machine can predict new answers based on its learning. Let's first explore our data. We can see by using the function type that the images are encoded as NumPy arrays. By using dtype attribute, we can also see that the values inside NumPy array are unsigned 8-bit integer that can represent values from 0 to 255, which represents the intensity levels, where 0 means black color and 255 means the white color and in between levels represents shades of gray. Indime attribute shows that the train images has three dimensions. And by using the shape attribute, you can see that we have 60,000 training images of 28 times 28 pixels. Let's use matplotlib to visualize the second image, which has index 1. The image shows the digit 0. Let's repeat the same for the third image, and this time it plots the digit 4. Now let's have a look at the train labels, which are an array of the digits, including only one dimension and 60,000 values, which means each image has its corresponding value. For example, the second image has a value 0 as we have seen in the first plot. And the third image has the value 4 exactly as we have seen before. Let's now have a look at the test images, which are also encoded as NumPy array. By using the shape attribute, we can see that we have 10,000 images of 28 times 28 pixels. As expected, test images has three dimensions, and test labels has only one dimension and 10,000 values which map it to each test image. In order to make sure that Keras is able to read our images and use them effectively, we need to reshape the images to one dimension instead of two by multiplying 28 by 28. Then we need also to scale the values in the 0-1 interval by first transforming to float 32 and dividing by the highest value which is 255. Another transformation that needs to be done before starting our training is to categorically encode the labels. The easiest way is to use Keras API, which provides a two underscore categorical method that can be used to one hot encode integer data. Let's now build our model. First, we need to import models and layers from Keras. Our model will be sequential model, which is appropriate for our example, where each layer has exactly one input tensor and one output tensor. Layers are the basic building blocks of neural networks. A layer consists of a data in, data out computation function. In our example, we will use two dense layers, which are densely connected or fully connected. A dense layer feeds all output from the previous layer to all its neurons. Each neuron provides one output to the next layer. The first layer contains 512 units, and as activation function we use the relu function, or the rectified linear unit, and finally the input shape of our images. The second layer contains 10 units, which represent the 10 digit classes from 0 to 9. As we are doing multi-class classification and dealing with probability, then it's preferable to use softmax as the activation function. 
We can print out the summary of our model. As you can see, for the first layer, we have 401,920 parameters, which is the total number of weights and bias. As our layers is fully connected, the total number of weights is 28 times 28 input times 512 units plus 512 bias. Then for the second layer, we have 5130 parameters, which is the result of the total number of weight, 512 inputs times 10 units plus 10 bias. The next step is the compilation, where we need to specify the optimizer which define how the model will update itself. We will use the RMS probe algorithm. We need also to specify the loss function, which measures the performance on the training data, and we will use for our case the cross entropy. Then we need to specify the metrics in order to monitor during the training and the testing. In our case, we will only focus on the accuracy, which is the number of the correctly labeled images out of all the data. Then we let our model learning from the training data using the method fit. The argument needed are the train images, the train labels, the number of epochs and the number of batch size. One epoch is one forward pass and one backward pass of all the training images. In our case, we will do it five times. And the batch size is the number of the training examples in one forward backward pass. The higher the batch size, the more memory space you will need. So we decided to proceed by a batch of 128. As you can see, for each epoch you have two values, the loss and the accuracy. You can also see that after five epochs, the accuracy of our model is about 98.8%, which is a good result. So let's check now if our model performs also well on the test images. The test data is used to see how well the machine can predict new answers based on its training. By using the evaluation method, we can get the loss and accuracy. As you can see, the accuracy is slightly lower than the training set, but 98% is a good start. This accuracy means that the model is able to classify correctly 98% images from 100 images. In this example, we only discover the basics of deep learning, but there are more functionalities and techniques to improve the accuracy of our model and avoid overfitting. Let's continue our journey together and explore more in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching and see you soon.